Hey, what's going on everyone? It's your boy Ryan coming at you with another video. In today's video, I'm taking a wooden dowel that looks like this, turning it into a fishing lure that looks like this, and then we're gonna go out and try and catch a monster fish on it. Let's dive in. And in front of me, we have everything that I'll be using to make our lure. We have our wooden dowel, which is made out of poplar. It's about one and three eighths inch, I believe. 80 grit sandpaper, 600 grit sandpaper, galvanized steel wire. This is the heaviest stuff I can find. I can't remember what gauge it was, but it was the heaviest stuff at Home Depot. Some polyurethane, just clear poly. Some spray paint, just brown and white. Little bit of craft paint. Some epoxy. First things first, we got to measure out how long we want our lure to be. I want mine to be right around three inches. My motto has always been measure once, cut twice. <laughs> but the beauty of making your own lure is it doesn't have to be any specific dimensions. And I'm just looking for something that's a little bit stubbier, a little bit fatter than the standard popper that you're going to find in a store. And here we have our base of our lure. Something super silly looking that eventually, hopefully, is gonna catch a fish. Next step is we have to start the shape of the lip, the shape of the front end of that popper. So I have a 7 8 paddle bit, and I'm just going to eyeball the center. It does not have to be perfect, because remember, I'm gonna be shaping this a lot with some sandpaper, holding it with some vice grips, have a little towel wrapped around it, just so I don't damage my hand or, you know, this doesn't pop off and hit my hand. There's the shape that we were going for. That's obviously this isn't perfectly centered. However, we can take this and make this the bottom and this the top. Now we're gonna shape it even more. Now I just happen to have my home gym in my garage as well and I have my barbell here which I'm going to use to help shape. But you could use like a broomstick or a PVC pipe or anything that you have kind of sitting around your garage or sitting around any space like that to use if you wanted to follow along and make, make something like this. Wrapping the sandpaper around the barbell and then I am just going to run the lure with the top facing up. Just start rubbing it along here and this is going to give me that shape that I want. This would take a while. I'm probably going to use a good amount of sheets of sandpaper, but this is going to help. You can see, if you look right here, it's already starting to get a little bit of shape, and it's going to give us that classic popping mouth, that classic open mouth look that a popper is going to have, which, you know, throws a lot of water and hopefully attracts some fish. Full disclosure guys, this is the second lure that I've ever made. I, you know, I, I want to always try and make better videos for you guys. Try and make videos that are thinking out of the box, doing something a little bit different. And they're interesting for me because making the same video and over again, it's making the same video over and over again gets kind of, you know, boring for me. I, as someone that likes to make things, likes to create, likes to get better in everything that I do, I have to try and do things to just I had to try and do new things in order to keep myself engaged and keep myself excited about everything. I don't know if I said this, but this is that 80 grit sandpaper that I mentioned early in the video. And y'all, if you have a better idea or if you would have gone about this in a different way, I want you to comment down below how you would have made your own lure. Just let me know. This is the second one I've ever made. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you like, the fact that I'm trying to change it up, trying to do a different type of video, be sure to hit that like button. It helps the channel out a lot, and y'all, I'll tell you what, I'm dying right now. It's Florida heat is killing me, but I'm trying to make some co content for you guys, so hope you appreciate it. So now I've pretty much got the shape that I wanted. We have to hollow out the rest of the lure so we can shove some wire through the middle of it. I'm gonna use one piece of wire to basically have through wire construction. That way I can tie my line up here and then I have a hook down here, but it's just one piece of wire attached to it. I've got a quarter inch drill bit and we got to hollow out some room 
for us to put that wire through the center of the lure. And there we are, drilled all the way through. Didn't exactly hit it perfectly straight through, but that's not a big deal because, you know what, it's a homemade lure. Definitely don't need a vise. I literally did this with a set of channel locks on Mach 1 of this lure. But I'm just going to, again, wrap it in a rag so we don't completely damage the outside of the lure while it's being held in place. And now I'll just be able to run some sandpaper over it by hand. Obviously, I don't have a belt sander or anything like that but run it over by hand and start to taper off this back end. We got the shape we were looking for and it's starting to finally look like a lure he has now. Next, we have to make sure that this thing is going to sit properly in the water. So I'm gonna add a little bit of weight right here. Gotta drill it out and then we'll add some lead to it picked a drill bit that was just a hair bigger than the weight I'm going to be adding, which is going to be these two split shots. These are just number five split shots. Not too heavy, but heavy enough that it's going to cause this to sit properly in the water. Like I said, drill bits just a hair smaller than them. I drew a line on the bottom of the lure just to make sure I was actually doing it on the bottom or drilling these holes on the bottom. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball the placement of these holes, but I want them in the back end. So we'll do one here. There we are. This is pretty easy. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that split shot, I'm going to fit it into that hole, and then I'm going to take a hammer and hammer it flat. So it's all going to kind of just, it's going to kind of mushroom into that hole. That's one. Probably should have used just a little bit smaller of a drill bit so this was a tighter fit. Now we have that lead sitting at the bottom. So our lure is going to sit right side up when it's floating in the water. And that's not enough lead to sink that wood. All that wood is gonna float on its own. I've got this 10 gauge galvanized steel wire. I'm pretty sure it was 10 gauge when I bought it from Home Depot. And I bought this with the intention of using it for the line inside our lure. So it's basically the through wire construction. After I got home, I was thinking, you know, I probably could have just used a coat hanger, but <laughs> whatever, steel is cool. Uh, now I'm just going to tie a version of kind of like a haywire twist. So any of you guys that, you know, fish offshore for like kingfish, things like that, tuna, or if you're into shark fishing, you would tie like a haywire twist. But I'm gonna make sure my loop is very, very small because this is what I'm gonna tie my lure to. I'm gonna use pliers to help me twist this. I'm gonna make it pretty short. It doesn't have to be need to be perfect because of how heavy this steel is. Um, it's not going anywhere. It's not gonna pull. It's not like I'm tying number four wire for kingfish in a tournament or something like that. This can be pretty darn short. There's that, or cut it off. Cutting it off would be fine. Press it down, make sure it's as flat as possible, and this should pull right on through our lure. Make sure it fits into there. You can see that? That's gonna sit very, very nicely. Starting to look more and more like a lure, minute by minute. Now, this part's the little bit, gonna be a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna bend it back. This loop will be just a little bit bigger than the other one. And this is just gonna be straight barrel rolls because I'm not gonna be able to get enough room to make a perfect hay wire, which is fine. Grab these pliers. Try and keep the barrels fairly tight. But again, it's a homemade lure, boys. Doesn't need to be perfect. Mm. There's that, maybe one more. Nope, it's gonna die like right there. And there we are, the hook will go on that end and I'll tie my line on that end. This whole lure is made out of wood, right? And as most people know, wood is going to absorb water. So the more I use this, the more saturated with water this is gonna be. So if we're gonna do something, let's do it the right way. I'm gonna seal this with some polyurethane. 
that guy right there. It's gonna help to keep some water out and just seal the entire thing. I've already applied one coat. I'm just gonna go ahead and dip one half right here. Just like that. And allow that to drip off. Then I'll take another dip the other end. This is coat number two. I'll probably do, I don't know, like three in total, something like that. And it'll just seal the entirety of the lure very, very nicely. Gave this guy a couple hours to dry, so we got two coats of poly on it, and I'm getting impatient, so I think in a perfect world, if I had more time, I'd probably give this, you know, maybe three, four coats of this just to really seal it very well. But, you know guys, this is a fishing channel and I want to go fishing. So we got two coats, I got some 600 grit, and I'm just gonna rough up the outside just a little bit. I'm gonna do this throughout the entirety of it with that 600 grit, just to get the outside rough enough so that some paint's gonna stick. So I'm gonna do two coats on this guy. I'm gonna do one that's white as the base and one that's brown. Just using some cheap spray paint. I picked this up at the craft store for like three bucks a can. And then we'll get that brown top layer. And I'm just gonna do the top half. That's gonna give us our half brown, half white look. I just got this really, really cheap, cheap craft paint from uh, Michael's, which is a local craft store. Just take this guy. Plenty of paint in the cap. Really, cheap. I would highly recommend if you guys want to do something like this that you don't skimp on the paint brushes, because I'll tell you what, y'all. This is this is Mach 2. This is the second lure that I've made like this. And these cheap paintbrushes just get hair everywhere. It is just, and it's gross. You know, the first lure I made just had like all these little dried hairs all over it. And it looked terrible. It worked just fine, you know. It floated and everything had the right action. But, you know, when you make something, you kind of want to be proud of it. You know, to a degree. I'm a perfectionist, so I'll sit here for hours worrying about silly things but for today's purposes I, I told myself I wasn't gonna freak out and try and make a perfect lure while also trying to make a good video so we're just getting the job done for this so I got that kind of red mouth just makes the mouth end stand out a little bit more I'm just gonna eyeball it and just give him some nice little red gills with a finer paintbrush like this, so something like that. And like that. If I had a much nicer paintbrush, I could make these look so much better. But this cheap paintbrush, man, it's not great. But again, not trying to be perfect, just trying to be done. And we got this thing, this fat, stubby little popper is starting to look more and more like something that a fish would want to eat. Let me tell you guys, lures, most of the lures that you see, especially in American stores, they are not made to catch fish. That's their secondary, their secondary purpose. Most lures are made specifically to catch you, to catch the fishermen, to catch the consumer. They want to stand out from the others because Tell you a little secret, most lures do work in most environments and they don't have to be super fancy, have all this holographic stuff. It's really about the action and the profile and the fish isn't seeing all of those fine things. It's all, most of the time it's about a reaction. Let's let this dry and then I'm gonna hit it with some 220, or some 600 grit in a second. I took these eyeballs off of a jig that I had lying around and I think these things look super, super cool. Don't ask me where to find them because I have absolutely no idea, but I bet you you can find them online from like craft stores they're, they look like cat eyes, like they just have a very, very unique look to them. And on Mach 1 of this lure, I drew, or I kind of carved indentation, indentations in where the gills are and where the eyeballs were going to go. Um, I honestly felt like that was kind of a waste of time in all reality, so this time I'm just going to super glue these guys on and then we'll epoxy over top. So just grab a little bit of crazy glue. I'm gonna 
dab some of this guy right where I want the eyeball. And I'm just going to eyeball where I want the eyeball. And then stick it on. This will just hold the eyeball in place long enough, and then when we epoxy over the entire lure, everything should hold together very, very nicely. Add that guy on there. And <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I swear every time I use super glue for anything, I end up with it all over my hands. And this just might be my first time where I didn't get it on my hands, but I'll probably end up with epoxy all over my hands next. So I'm not gonna get out of this with uh, clean fingers. <laughs> This is going to be pretty much our last step when it comes to the lure itself and it'll be ready for a hook and maybe to catch some fish. But just going to take some of this Gorilla Epoxy. This stuff fires very, very fast so I got to be quick about it. And I'll paint it on with a paintbrush, squeeze all of it out into my little mixing bowl here. Mix this all together, it's just hardener and epoxy. Let's paint this guy on. I'm gonna do it pretty darn thick because I want this to all be protected. And this is where I got hairs everywhere because the epoxy just pulls the hairs out of the paintbrush and it looks like we're probably gonna be doing that again. So, I don't know. It's not only gonna be a wooden lure, it's also gonna be have uh, some hairbrush hair on it which is all good. Just definitely guys, I would not skimp out and I'd spend an extra dollar or two for some paintbrushes if you don't want hairs everywhere, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do something like this. Yeah, I'm just gonna start liberally coating this thing because this epoxy is going to dry rapidly. And one of the big things that I wanna try and get it's not only the eyeballs encased in epoxy, but I also want to, if I can, completely fill this hole where the through wire construction is. And that will help prevent water from getting in on the inside of the lure itself. Oh, he's got some hair on his chest. I think. That should be enough. Some of you that actually know how to craft are probably cringing at the amount of epoxy on this thing, but like I said at the beginning of the video, this is, uh, this is Mach 2. This is something that I'm just learning to do, and um, I think it'll definitely work very well. Definitely no lure making expert by any means, but I think it'll be something very cool, and I think it'll definitely, definitely get the job done. Just hand turn this thing because it's five minute epoxy. Walk around the house and give me something to do. Just make sure I don't drip any epoxy anywhere. Our last and probably our most important, or one of the most important steps is uh, we gotta add a hook um, because if there's no hook, we can't catch any fish. Just got a owner treble hook. I think it's a 1-0 or a 2-0. Yeah, I think it's a 2-0 owner treb. And it's all, I already have it on a split ring. Slide that guy on there. Good pair of split ring pliers will save you a lot of headache if you're ever trying to add or change your hooks out. That pops on there. What do you think, boys? I think it is going to catch a giant. And honestly, there's only one way to find out. Let's go fishing. You're good. Redfish or snook? Uh, I think it's a redfish. This is a 12 pounder. 12 pounder. No, it's a big fish. Cool. 
Yeah. Do you mind getting the stuff? It's down there. Thank you. So when I saw this fish come up on top and bust my popper, it had me so dumbfounded that honestly, I didn't know what to do and all I could focus on was fighting the fish. So while you guys that are regulars on this channel know I like to talk you through the process, what's going on when I'm fighting a big fish, that wasn't the case this day. All I was focused on was fighting this monster and you guys are gonna see, Let's go. it was a fish of a lifetime. So this fish came up, busted the popper on top, that homemade popper. Can I get a net, please? I really appreciate it, brother. Really big red. Thought she was done. Come on, girl. Hey, Ben. We're Come on, girl. You might have to swing it out. Get another net. Might need another, might need another hook. I won't pull it. Yeah. Got another net? Yeah, he's gonna get one. This might be the biggest redfish of my life. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> He's out, he's out. Swing it out, Chris. This one, this net's a little bit wider. And the best thing is throw, throw it behind it. I got you. Ah. Might be the biggest red of my life, dude. Let's go. Oh my God, dude. Yeah, that just might, might be my best one ever. On the homemade popper. Jesus Christ. Let me just cut it. No, I was gonna, that's fine if you wanna just cut it. I was gonna leave the popper in for a picture. Yeah, that's fine. Take them down there in the beach and try and drop them in the net. Oh. Think so? Oh my God, dude. Let's go. Let me. <laughs> Thank you for letting us use your net. Oh. Oh. 
Really appreciate it. Oh. Oh, thank you for grabbing the stuff. Oh, let's go. I'll tell you what guys, that fish had me so excited. I forgot all of my uh, YouTube responsibilities, if you want to call it. I didn't film an outro, didn't talk to you guys about the rod that I was using. I bet, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, I, I barely talked the entire time during that fight because as soon as I hooked it, I saw the how big that fish was and I was just in the zone, just locked in on that fish. But you guys probably are gonna ask what kind of rod and reel I was using. This is a Vanstall VSX 200. I have it spooled with some 40 pound, I'm pretty sure it's just Daiwa J braid, um, the four strand. This rod is a custom made rod. It's made by Juno Bait and it is a Phoenix Black Diamond Hybrid. So it's kind of like a carbon fiber weave and this rod is rated for 20 to 50 pound test. So a very, very stiff rod, nine foot two in total length. It's very, very stiff. Honestly, a little too stiff for my liking, but I've had it for a very long time and used it to catch a lot, a lot of big fish, just like that big red. And y'all, let me tell you what, that was special. There's only so many firsts, so many biggest ever that you'll get in your lifetime. And so, I feel super, super lucky to catch that massive fish and to be on a lure that I made by hand is just extra special. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next one. Later.